Good evening and welcome to Waldorf Live, everybody. I'm your host, Annette Gomez. So it is a hot button topic here in Charles County, whether to adopt a charter or not. And tonight I have the pleasure of sitting down with two individuals that have a lot of knowledge when it comes to public policy. I'm sitting down with Delegate Edith Patterson and Delegate Deborah Davis, and we will begin with you, Delegate Patterson. Nice to meet you. My pleasure. I, I think I want to start and call this a civics 101 lesson. First of all, I want to know how you even got interested in this arena. Well, first of all, thank you very much for asking and having me here. Uh, we moved, I'm not a native Charles Countyan. We moved here in 1973. And at the time I was employed by the Charles County Public Schools uh, to teach science. And I did for one year, but I decided at the same time to complete my uh, advanced degree and I got a degree in counseling and was hired by the College of Southern Maryland. At the time it was Charles County Community College. Okay. And I was really uh, surprised because we're so close to Washington DC, the lack of engagement of students who were from the community. And so I was hired as a recruiter to have more minorities come to the college and have a diverse campus. And that's what happened over the past, I was there for almost 30 years. Uh, so the condensed version is I was a counselor, recruiter, and then ended up being a director. But during my first years at the college when my children were just born, I noticed that uh, in terms of academic preparedness, there were so many voids and uh, it, the lack of advanced placement tests. And most of all, the lack of engagement of a diverse population in advanced classes. And so I ran for school board. Mm. That was a challenge because at the time, as I shared, my children were in private school. And so the first challenge was, how can you be on school board if your children are in private school? And also at the time, I was the only minority to run for any elected office. And that was a case for almost 10 years um, being engaged as the only a sole representative. Needless to say, I was, I was successful, and I served for 12 years on Charles County Board of Ed. So I hear the word change. So explain this to me if I'm not from here. What have you seen in the last few years? Because when I was moving here, they were like, oh, Annette, you're moving to the country. And someone said, but you haven't seen Charles County. So talk about the growth and the development and what this charter means. Well, the charter represents the fact that Charles County is not the way it was in the 50s, 60s, 70s, or even the early 2000s. It represents the fact that there were people, there were policymakers who had a vision. They had a vision and the plan was to have a development district, which is the, the I call it the top part of the county. That is to say Waldorf, Bryan's Road, parts of Hughesville, et cetera, and then uh, the other part of the county, the lower part and the middle part are really very reserved. We have a lot of land and if one wants to see the quote countryside, that's where it is. But Waldorf is designed, it's designed, it's designed to be a development district. And with that, uh, it has en enriched, it's enriched this county. Uh, we would not be right now the number one uh, top in the nation, African-American or minority district in the entire U.S. had it not been for the expansion and the immigrant and, the, and persons uh, moving to this county. And I just learned that because I thought it was Princess George. We have surpassed. We Prince surpassed George. it two years ago. Yes. And you might say why. It is because again, income. But that's just one segment. You have to also look at our school system. Advanced placement was offered, but in terms of being offered to all mm -hmm. students, that was not the case. And so there had to be, we put in place uh, a minority planning group, community engagement. And I think that as the county grew, there were great expectations, not only for the citizens, but also for the students and so many benefits mm -hmm. that we witnessed, not only at the public school system, but also at the College of Southern Maryland. Can we talk about some of those benefits and what, 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 what that means? It means that we're, uh, Charles County developed uh, more competitive mm -hmm. students. 
instead of just competing amongst the mm -hmm. high schools. During my tenure, there was only four high schools. There was Lackey, La Plata, um, McDonough, we didn't have Westlake, McDonough and, um, my mind's gone blank, but those were the four. Mm -hmm. Lackey, La Plata, McDonough. And then <clears throat> over the years, because of the growth and because of the need to have more opportunities, we have North Point High School, we have Westlake High School, and St. Charles High School, which is right next door to where we are right now, mm -hmm. and, and others that are planned. You have to recognize that um, with the growth of the county and with the expansion and opportunities, that is what we're looking for, as well as having people to come into the county because they want to be here. Mm -hmm. And we talked. We were talking a little bit earlier because I was getting a history lesson. Can you explain, explain the structure of the government, how it's um, set up, and how does that change under charter, if at all? Well, in 1973, when I came here, we had the commercial form of government, and you know, in thinking about 1973, we only had three county commissioners. We had two men and one woman, and then at one point we had two women and one man one man and um, under their under their policies mm -hmm. it's pretty much local mm -hmm. local impact we had one uh, one senator and I believe two delegates to the Maryland General Assembly but in 2002 I'm sorry 38 years ago not 2002 38 years ago there was a community activist his name was Claude Mathis mm -hmm. He was African-American, very engaged, and he advocated for a five-board county board of commissioners. Unfortunately, that became a referendum issue mm. because everything, you just don't automatically make it happen. It has to go to referendum. It did pass referendum, but unfortunately, Claude Mathis was killed tragically in an accident near his home. Um, and so he did not really benefit from the fruits of all of his mm -hmm. advocacy and labor. And so from that point on, we did have the five border commissioners. Uh, so I'm going to inject myself. When I became, uh, when I decided after 12 years, that's enough being a, mm -hmm. on a board of uh, school board, I decided to run for another office mm -hmm. and lost lost the election, mm -hmm. it was, I think it was for a delegate seat, mm -hmm. but it was too premature, it was premature. Mm -hmm. And so I then ran and was elected to be chair of the Charles County Democratic Central Committee. During that tenure, the responsibility of the Central Committee is, should there be a vacancy in any political office, you have, it's your responsibility for your committee to replace that individual. And so we became, um, when one member decided he was going to leave the General Assembly, the president of the county commission decided that he wanted that seat and it became musical chairs. Okay. And so in 2004, that seat became open because of the movement of the members, persons who were in those elected office. As chair of the Democratic Central Committee, it was my responsibility to take the lead, to find a replacement. Mm -hmm. And I thought, voila. Mm. There is no minority representation, none, zero, at the county level, at the state level. And, and so <clears throat> I recused myself and, and was placed as a candidate for my peers, had le letters of recommendation, et cetera. And so in 2005, I was appointed by then Governor uh, Martin O'Malley to become a county commissioner. And so that was historic. But I remember the US, one of the US senators saying uh, at an event openly, he said, well, she was appointed. But the challenge is, can she be elected? Mm. And I thought, we'll see. And so the following, the following term, the following year, both myself and now Commissioner Collins ran for the seat. And in 2006, we were elected as county commissioners. And I served for the next four years, and Commissioner Collins has served con consistently mm -hmm. since that time. And so when you think about change, um, that's where you saw people 
it's really important to have representation of all ethnicities on boards, commissions, etc., so that young people or others can say, well, you know what, if she did it, maybe I can do it as well. Representation matters. It absolutely does. So you rose to the challenge. So what do you want people to think about when they enter into this election year? What do you want? I, I think that when you think about charter, uh, it represents change. And uh, as I said before, at one point we had three commissioners, now we have five. And we have changed in terms of not only growth, but expectations. And when the, we are, I can only speak for myself, when I'm in Annapolis, I look at so many opportunities that exist for, for, for counties that have charter versus code home rule. Even passing some legislation, there were roadblocks. Some things we wanted to put in that the county approved, we could not. Why? Because we are lumped in or included with other commissioner and code home counties. Right now, there are only six counties that are, that are code, home rule, Charles being one. The others include, I have my notes, Allegheny, Caroline, uh, Kent, Queen Anne, and Worcester. And I have to say, uh, Delegate Patterson, because I see it on the signs all over, home rule, home rule. Explain what that means. It's simply a, a form of government whereby that there are le pieces of legislation that you don't need the General Assembly, but then there are other pieces of legislation that you do. And, and for a minute, I will go over that with you, but I just need you talk about charter. And mm -hmm. I think that it's, it's important to know that there, there are six that are home rule, four, four or five that are commissioner based. Okay. Those are Calvert and, and St. Mary's next to us. This okay. one is their commissioner base. Okay. And then their charter. And these are the counties, there are 11 other counties that have charter forms of government. Progressive counties, or some counties that look like us. Yes. Hartford County, for example, Frederick County, uh, Baltimore County, a Anne Arundel, Prince George's, Montgomery, um, even Wicom, I shouldn't say even, but Wicomico County or Eastern Shore, mm -hmm. Talbot. These are counties that have charter government. Mm -hmm. It simply means it is a way that you have uh, checks and balances within the, within the government. And um, I think if, if members would like to go to the Maryland Association of Counties, mm -hmm. uh, MACO, they had a wonderful comparison of all three. It's called um, the official code, code home rule versus commissioner versus charter. And it clearly delineates how the three, not the two, but the three are different. Whether it's the structure of government, whether it's uh, public policies, land use, etc. It's really important that commission that commissioners mm -hmm. actually have the power that they were entrusted with. Mm -hmm. uh, my concern is that those powers in Charles County have been erased, okay. erased. Okay. And so the powers that during my tenure as a, as a commissioner, whereby we had authority or, or we had the county administrator to report to us and then we had access to project directors and managers and personnel. Those were possibilities. Those were lines of organizational structure. Now the line is zero. There is no line between the county commissioners and the county administrator. It's like a title. They're just figureheads okay. without any authority. That is wrong. That is not the idea of code home rule. And that is not what people expect. When commissioners go out, they're going to be held accountable. Yet, yet, their, they, the authority has been erased. That's why we need charter. Delegate Patterson, I think that a lot of individuals are not aware. So how do you educate yourself on this? Where do we start before you go to, into this election? I, I think I'm going to encourage people. Uh, I'm a former teacher. But most of all, I'm a scientist. My background is in biology and chemistry, and so I'm used to doing research. I say do the research. 
their hypothesis, this is what we believe, and then their procedures and tests. Do not fall victim to terror, to uh, threats, to misinformation. I mean, well, you're smart. I don't think people realize how smart citizens are. And so when you talk about vote no without any explanation or vote no because your taxes are going to increase, what is the rationale, what is the proof that you have? I say vote for government that will be more adherent and responsible to you, more responsive to you. Town hall meetings are required. There are term limits. As I said before, some commissioners have been commissioners for a very long time. That is a choice under code home rule and commissioner government. That is not the case with charter. You have a term limit and then you're out. You have to wait out if you want to return again. That reflects the people's will. And that reflects the government, how we function every day from federal government and, and other forms of government. So I think that that's the most important take, to not be scared, not fall victim to division, but to actually say, this is something that merits attention, and I'm gonna do my part, and I'm going to encourage you to vote yes for charter. And educate yourself. And educate yourself, and I know that they will. Thank you, Delegate Patterson, for sitting down with us. My pleasure, as always.